No, I'm setting up the micro to YouTube. Okay. Testing, testing. I think we're... Did it already start it? Yep, I think I did. Alright. Um, I apologize for not having a lot of sound on some of the recent videos and I uh, will still be working on getting people that sign up set up for the uh, the viewing that will be online but on this one I will answer some questions about the <laughs> I thought there was going to be about a lot of art questions. It's more about what happens when you're working for somebody or you're you're doing a project. It's kind of hard to go into detail about that because they're always different. It's never going to be, well, I'll take that back. For me personally, it's never been like the same kind of atmosphere each time. It's always been different. Uh, and it depends on if the person who is the creator is in charge or if it's uh, kind of like a pay and you do what I say kind of job it just depends I think I spoke about this before I don't know if I went to detail um, a lot of the time when you see projects that are going on it's gonna be people that know each other because they either feel comfortable or it's worked out where there were really no problems in like the collaboration that they did and uh, when I say collaboration I'm talking about just on the aspect of uh, beginning a project from start to finish and having those same people <laughs> at the end of the projects still there and either happy or you know say hey this is what we're going to be doing next time I'll, a lot of people will uh, weed themselves, so unless you're really one of these people that are, um, how do you say it? I want to say creative. I don't want to use anything disparaging as far as the creative. Some people that are creative have a different way that they go about doing a project or the way they do their art. Some people that may have the money to do that meaning the artist is so successful in the art that now he controls a project that's different compared to hey we want to hire this person that is an artist and we're going to kind of deal with whatever comes with it because this person is a genius and you know there's that as well but for most of them it's people that know each other you know, it's going to be someone, you're not going to go someplace and be like, hey, uh, I, I was drawing for this long and, and, you know, I want to, you know, start working for you. It's, that works out sometimes, and usually it's creative minds, meaning that some people have a same way of looking at a project, meaning that they, their art style is very similar, or someone seeking you out for your art style that they uh, really like. Because those ideas will form in that way. Um, you can look at any kind of, I don't know, videos about uh, the concepts or anything. Like go if you look up like YouTube videos about the like the background of what it took to create some of the the ideas in the art. The one I remember from the one I seen last time I want to say it was for the movie they were doing like concept and drawing and artwork for um, what is that movie it's part of the uh, the alien franchise and I know I have stuff in front of me but <laughs> I wanted going to look for it uh, starts with a C you'll know what I'm talking about but the person who uh, did the movie for Aliens, they were uh, working with some people, and you could see those those people have the same kind of idea and concept of what they want things to look at. Those are fleshed out usually by 
usually by the creator but sometimes the creator will be inspired by someone's kind of artwork and they want to either add that to their creation or develop it to their own kind of concepts where you're taking pieces and bits from other ideas and you're just forming something uh, as far as like a team and sometimes a creator and a artist are so in sync that there's really not a lot of talking that needs to happen because they're they they understand that it becomes like a, I don't know it's a weird thing it happens a lot sometimes um, for artists where you're like oh I get what you're trying to say and visually you can see it and that's hard to do so um, so when when you guys are asking me uh, on like my my not the YouTube but when you guys are asking me questions about like that most of that stuff everyone knows it's can be a small community if you're very good at what you're doing um, but as for new people because I think that's what the idea was if you're new you're just gonna have to basically go and kind of beg people or like email people which can be difficult uh, if you're just jumping into it because they don't know you um but yeah it's 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 hard to really describe that and give like a clear definitive answer is hey just do this and then you can start working for this company you know it's it's one of those kind of things where you either into it so much uh, where people know you or you've put your art online and people are like wow that's you know what I mean you could do it that way uh, most of the time what I see it's people that know each other that knew each other from you know whatever you know person that they hang out with not all times because most artists now I don't think they hang out with each other like they used to um, but you have the ability to put your stuff online um, do what I'm doing starting uh, YouTube from scratch <laughs> where no one know, knows you and they can kind of go by what you're doing um, that's been working out pretty well I would say I was not really into it but you'll get feedback from people um, you know if they think you're doing something they like you they will contact you which is kinda like a good thing um, but yeah so yeah if you're just talking about trying to um, break in I don't know that's difficult uh, what was the other thing? There was something else that I started seeing. Um, there's a God, I forgot what it's called. I always blank out when I'm on a microphone for some reason. It must be something. Well, basically, when you're going out for a job, it's whatever that is. You put all your stuff on there. It's like your resume. Um, some people have said that they've been contacted that way as well. Oh, and I'm blanking on the name of it, but it's popular. You'll know what I'm talking about if you're familiar. Um, but yeah, that would be it. You could try to find people's email if you have any connections with the way the uh, like Hollywood works. Um, they have ways of contacting uh, different companies, and then um, you're not going to get. Hey, I want to talk to Brad Pitt. You're not going to get that. But if you um, there is a way to, to contact them and send emails what your work and things like that be careful of that make sure that anything you send them you're not worried about it getting uh, taken uh, you don't know a lot of times you think these people are just rich and they won't have to do anything where they'll be like hey, let me just take that whole idea from you so just be careful I don't care how big the company is how big the studio is be very uh, worried about that um, if you are a great artist there are a lot of different places you can go online there's a lot of message boards where they are looking for artists um, a lot of that is online which is a good thing for you because then you can kind of be protected by whatever you are sending them um, because it's a digital footprint that they will have as far as oh, I've never heard of this person right digital foot footprints now are very good uh, where if you send someone something um, and there's proof that they got it and then all of a sudden you see your idea <laughs> f 
flushed out in a movie uh, that's going to be coming out, you may have some kind of, you know, recourse, something that you can do to kind of be like, hey, that was <laughs> everything they did was mine. So, but you know, if if you're going out, like I said, for me personally, if you're doing a first time project thing where you want them to back you, I would say the first thing you're going to do, you're probably going to do it for free because you'll have to have something that'll say like we don't want to put a lot of money into this even though you may have the greatest idea in the world people that are spending money they want that money back that's usually the way it works so keep that in mind when you're doing your first kind of project thing most of the time you're not going to get paid what you deserve and then hopefully if you are good and the project makes money more than likely they'll either stick with you or they may you know give you another shot and, and then pay you uh, after the fact but if you the first time what I've noticed is um, you're gonna have to show them people want to see it and I don't care what it is I don't care if it's a video game I don't care if it's a movie whatever it is because they do that with movie stars as well unless they're big 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 brand uh, people that they have enough money cycled through where you know they made this profit and this is the money we use on all profits going forward some people have that that cachet to do that because uh, and the only place you're going to find that kind of money is going to be and people argue about this all the time Hollywood or New York there is no in between uh, usually people will be like oh yeah Hollywood has a lot of money but there's a lot of hoops and they have a system and and the way they work with each other um, that is different from what you would call normal for me personally uh, because they have a way of telling you uh, yes and no at the same time uh, if anyone knows what that means it means that they will you know they'll give you leverage based on where you are as far as a star uh, you know they're not going to be paying attention to you if this is your first project and you're going to come in and tell them hey uh, this is where it's going to be going on and I think I went through this before first projects you will be speaking to a lot of managers a lot of people that manage the money they're going to have maybe somebody that did an art project for them before come in and kind of kind of guide you into this is the way this works this like that um, story wise they may have other creators that they are paying that they need to uh, make use of and they will be hanging around with you and you can flush out ideas um, and the way they kind of write scripts because some people that are storytellers they don't know how to write scripts those are two different things um, and you will find that out people that are conjoined is probably a good thing for you if you ever want to be a uh, what I saw is the uh, the overall creator meaning that you have concepts you have story and then you're able to tell it uh, with some kind of script or you're able to tell it with the the script is easily flushed out and a lot of times that is uh, that can be difficult for um, people but if they have a lot of people that they're paying um, things that they're going to be you know trying to say okay well we have these people that we need to pay and they're on our payroll and you know this is your first project this will be the person kind of guides you in on you know how everything's gonna work um, that works out well uh, the best one for me personally is if you're not the uh, what I say the person in charge of the overall project you're someone that is helping them that's good because technically a lot of times is you may not have your name on anything but they're paying you uh, you know to be here and let me preferences with this anybody that is working for you if they're your friend or not your friend don't give them a year's worth of salary don't give them six months um, of, of salary because that's going to always end very badly right mentally prepare for this when you go into projects with people that are your friends or other artists that you're with, you have to have everything written down. I don't care if it's your mom, your brother, or your sister, or whoever that you are in love with, whoever you care about. 
if you do not have everything written down and you do not have everything kind of dotted in ink it will not go well and that's the sad thing about the way things work because at the beginning everyone's happy right son of the oh they're gonna give me let's just say a low low budget oh they're gonna give me uh, a million and a half to do this thing right and you're like oh okay i've made it no you haven't most of that money is just not going to go to you. A lot of that money is going to go for production. So if you're talking about like a... And, and this is for the people that were asking about first projects and stuff like that. What I've learned. And this is only my story. This is some of the stories I've heard. Things like that. So don't ever think that, oh, well, this is the only way. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Um first projects a lot of people are um when they hear the budget in their head they're thinking that money belongs to them the only way that happens is if you are like i said the storyteller the concept person and the script person especially the script person because everything that you do as far as you know projects cartoon and this is mostly what I'm talking about. Animated cartoons. I'm not talking about... I'm not really familiar with movie stuff. Unless... Um, we... What was the movie stuff? Like you'll do some title stuff. Sometimes where you'll have a real movie. And then it'll be some kind of... Uh, animation part of the, the... The concept art. And stuff like that. That will happen. Um, how about I... Not just talk. How about I draw as well. Um, so you'll have that, but m most of the things I'm talking about is going to be, uh, animation side. And, uh, no, I, I don't really know too, someone that's about the, um, video games. No, I, I don't know a lot about that. I've heard horror stories about that, but I don't really know a lot about that. Um, I'm just speaking on animated films or shorts, things of, of that nature. So, uh, what was that? I think I lost my train of thought. What was I speaking about? It's been a long day. I'm sorry. I'm in Florida. I had a lot of stuff that I had to take care of. We had a hurricane uh, that came through here a while back. But what was I talking about? We talked about concepts. We talked about... Oh, the creative part and like how it worked with the, the finances. So, um making the the money part most of the time that's going to be on uh the script side most of that will go to that the thing about the scripts is they usually have a way of dealing with them separately more of like a book art kind of way of they they basically will give them a certain amount of uh advance on whatever um their deal is because that could be different depending on the person again a lot of these are styled towards the artists and the people of what they're used to as far as their compensation. Some people are like, you know, I'm going to come out with something great. You know I am. And they have the luxury of uh, requesting larger uh, amounts. Um, there are a few writers that will get that because of who, just who they are. Um, so that's one thing that happens but most of the money it will go on the, the the writing as far as uh because that's anything that is written with your name on it is is something that uh will be able to translate into other ways for them of uh making money uh, a lot of people don't think about the fact that um like the star wars thing most of the time you're thinking about well I'm just going to say the people that I was talking to recently is oh well he only makes money off of this <laughs> no no the guy with books <laughs> like and people don't think about it it's like cuz they don't some people that don't read books it's only an idea as far as like um yes well he did this movie do you, he, there's so many streams of income that come off of <laughs> taking a book and making it into a movie. But think about 
do you think when you think about um you know lucas's writings it's usually oh well th- most people i would say would be thinking about the film and not the uh and not the uh the books and, and different things even the toys i would be like i don't know who owns that but think about it. that's just one stream of income that he has so um yeah it just depends so if if you're if they feel you're a value to them um they will be able to do that and a lot of times that's not their money anyway and they have an idea about how much money they're probably going to lose comparative and there's some kind of formula they come up with but again the formula is going to be based on the person you know what i mean what what it what's for sure and what's guaranteed uh, a lot of times, there's only big companies that can can kind of do that and be like, oh, yeah, if we if we lose on this one, you know, we've won on so many others, right? And uh, that's kind of way I've s- seen it go with like those type of things. So if you're you're coming out with your own uh, project and, and you say, oh, well, this is how much you're gonna get um, for this, and I'm just pretending to people that may be new, that money is oh the project will uh you know we're gonna give you a million dollars it's not a million dollars <laughs> it's a million dollars to do x y and z and then the profit and all that stuff comes after but anyone going into this don't don't think that money belongs to you because <laughs> it does not it can right hopefully everything goes well but um so when you say, "Oh well, how much did you get to do this?" and then when you tell people things, oh, "Wow, you must be uh, swimming in no." <laughs> That's usually you don't you don't even know what the outcome's going to be. Well, not for me personally, for me the outcomes are usually well put together because um, I'm familiar with working with the same individuals. Um, so, but yeah, don't that. Oh, you, he's made it because <laughs> it's, it's no small budget. With it, when you tell them small budgets, like, oh, it's a million dollar budget. Wow, no, that's not a lot of money. You have to think about how much you're getting out of that. And if you're not the writer, it's not going to be a lot. But yeah, those were some of those questions I was getting. I really wanted questions more about like art style and things like that, but or the animation stuff that would be good. But I guess people like to hear the uh, the dirt and the the craziness that goes on. Most normal artists are not. Um, it's not like a uh, unless you're in California or New York. It's not. A lot of people can uh, work remote, so it's not as crazy as it I would think it was before. Because most of those people, the artists that I know, are kind of like homebodies. You know what I mean? They re- they really don't. Um, they really want to just be doing their artwork and and not get burnt out on it. And you know, and then you're trying to juggle all, everything else as far as your life. You know. It's like, oh wow, that's a great job. Mm, not all the time. You have a lot of different things you have to do, especially like the burnout part, where you may have a project that you're really into, and then for whatever reason goes away. You got to just during that period, I think you stop and just you know, if you can stop, and then you know, or do a try to do more than one different project. So we're, you know, maybe if you're doing a sci-fi thing over here, you don't want to get burnt out. You know, maybe you got a, a superhero thing going on. You know what I mean? That you don't want to get burnt out on. You can try that. Because I do get... I'll just... The stuff that I get burnt out on, it's not the stuff that I'm doing for me. It's the stuff that I may be doing for others, right? So that happens a lot just gotta be uh that burnout thing is 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 uh 
problematic for people that really went into this wanting to create something that people see so that could be uh, difficult for I just say for me because sometimes you'll go through that where you're like oh my it's like I've been mind numb and then there's other things where I will be working and I don't like you look up at the window and it's morning time and you didn't even notice it hours are different uh, hours are very different because <laughs> most people will work from uh, what is it at 9 to 5 in the morning whatever that is depicting depending on who you're working for <laughs> that's not normal there was one person I heard about it's not my personal story it's like oh well he doesn't wake up until 2 a.m. and start working at 2 a.m. there's some people that are uh, I would say a real vampire kind of hours for some artists because that's just the feeling like that there's a certain feeling that certain people got to get before they can get into that's that mind space of what they're working on and you, you find that out uh, quickly because you'll be sending something to somebody hey can you uh, prove this or look at this <laughs> it's like they don't person is does is not alive now between even like even if for me if I'm like oh it's I don't know usually about at four four o'clock I that's usually my time of uh, getting uh you know that's my morning I would say 4 p.m. and some people are <laughs> it's totally like 2 a.m. like so if you send if I send someone something at I don't know 8 that might be their time they're just getting you know what I mean but now I'm starting to hopefully I'll be working on my thing a little bit longer than a 15 minute thing that I thought it was going to happen which I'm very happy about so hopefully that'll do that'll be very good for uh, my state of mind and I appreciate the people who are watching on YouTube because uh, you guys are all new and I am working on again trying to get you guys uh, we're trying to set up a like a chat sort of thing where we can like people that are artists can do their work and then talk to each other you know have someone else talking to you some people are so remote that you know that it can be a weird thing communication for some of them but sometimes it's cool to talk to somebody else, especially if you're working on something that might has your mind going. Uh, you start to go numb. And talking to people that may be outside of the country or in the states or outside of the states, things like that. Like an artist, I don't know. Could be artist therapy, I guess just depends on what's going on with you but yeah I think the remote thing is it's cool when you can do it but you want to be able to speak to some people sometimes <laughs> maybe not just depends on the person I was thinking about somebody that I know but yeah that was the and I hope that answered your your question about uh, a studio and again, that's just a small glimpse of, you know, what I have noticed. Uh, on this video, I think I was going to be going over, oh, transitions. Someone asked transitions. So, let's move away from this. 
I think you can set it up for a real transition. So I'm asking about the transition updates. Uh, what was I supposed to say? Updates, 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 updates. So, okay, yeah, updates. So updates on the, the, the small project. I'm still working on um, getting that set up to uh, for the people that will be uh, joining the, uh, adding to the YouTube because they keep telling me I have to build that up so stuff that I'm going to be doing is going to be based on that um, just for YouTube stuff and we are still working on how to get that done or you know my art and stuff or the project that I'm doing um, I don't want to get anyone upset because or give away what's going to be kind of happening so I have to kind of watch out how I just give that out but technically from what I was trying to convince them to understand is hey this will just be a trailer well if we do the trailer that way then this may happen it's always uh, in which I'm not I understand um, I'm kind of new to doing anything where I'm on my own so uh, meaning like by myself so kind of keeping cards close to the chest is I understand it and again I don't have any um, this being the first major project for me coming up by myself I really don't have any uh, control that I would usually be like well I still have this other thing I'm working on so I mean I understand you guys think this is good but I'm not just working on one thing I've been working on this stuff for years years so you know you guys if you're listening to me trying this is me trying to get out on YouTube and I'm trying to <laughs> bring as many people as I can to it um i think i said this about youtube if you guys are starting a youtube um it, don't get discouraged about it the people that get those numbers they pay for that i don't know if people know that or not and i didn't understand what they're talking about and they give you a person to communicate with um sort of like a director and and kind of how to get more people um to watch the videos uh anything that, as far as the drawing videos they want you to do a lot of that like you have to start doing a lot of videos and you know if you're working on anything else you know it may be difficult but um from what my understanding is they want you to commercial I want to say make it look like a commercial. They want you to make it uh, streamline it to make it more professional. Meaning like even with the microphones and um, things like that. I feel sorry for the people who are doing those tutorials because that is a hustle. I respect you guys doing this because like the amount of time that you have to go into this especially if you're uh editing i'm not doing any editing <laughs> i'm just talking to the microphone and whatever i say i'm not gonna erase it um but there's people who's like, oh well you should have not said this so you could edit this then no nope. i'm just gonna talk like i normally would talk and <laughs> speak how i normally would speak i'm not gonna do that it's, to me it's crazy and it's just my personality and things that I think and say. That's how it should be. Pretending. Things. Some of those those people that do the YouTube, it becomes almost like a commercial. So I know they don't speak like that. Right when you see them, hey, this is uh, this product here. It's, yeah, you sound like a commercial now. But those guys work hard, so I got to give it to them. Commercial sounding or not. But yeah, I, I didn't understand it. Uh, it's like, what is he just talking? Like, how are they making? They're making money because they're working hard on putting videos out, a lot of them. And and YouTube people will tell you that. But um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Don't think that 
they these people have got those many followers um <laughs> by not talking to these people at YouTube. And they will get like if you're if you start out from scratch, they be like, well, I want you to go ahead and um re what not read watch these videos, and you know get some ideas about if you want to be this type of platform or do you want to be a tutorial, or if you want to do like they have a lot of different things that they uh you know want you to watch. On their on on the uh, the YouTube videos and they show you how to edit and you know how to light it if you're doing um, anything where you're uh, like I don't know the ones that come to mind for me when I think about them is like <laughs> like hairdo tutorials those are the only people I see where they would have to worry about lighting I don't really get the lighting part um, but the the commercial certain the commercial the commercialization of it uh, you can see what it is because you can tell the difference between someone who just has a camera and is just talking to uh, the people normally and then you can see that the people that will become a I don't know like a news anchor in front of your face like the way they, they say things and and, and <laughs> the way they uh, announce well, you guys, I just saw this video, and I'm going to be that kind of talk. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not, that sounds like a, a like, I don't know, uh, uh, what, what concept of commercial I want to make fun of. Um, like for washing detergent. Hey, you ever use this? put this on your clothes and watch out what happens and these are just regular YouTube people right that became popular and I don't know if they that was who they were or did that come after the popularity because I've been watching a lot of those videos because the YouTube people will be like hey this is how you should uh, I want you to watch this video kind of get a concept of what you want to do get an idea uh, you know, you don't have that many followers. You you don't count right now. <laughs> you get like five followers. It's like, well, how many followers do you have? Uh, uh, ten. Okay. Well, we want you to go ahead and. <laughs> but some of that stuff, you gotta pay for that stuff. That's not. That's it's not free. And I'm glad I I seen some of that stuff because it's like I was like wow these guys just started doing videos and all of a sudden they got like um, even if you think about three thousand uh, subscribers that is a map that is a lot of people right so when you get to a hundred thousand like that I'm like well, wait a minute this person has this many followers there's some if and I did this because I was. Um, they were like, oh, well, if you're going to be doing your project, why don't you go ahead and put all your projects, whatever you do on your computer. So why would they want to watch that? Oh, well, people will watch anything. <laughs> okay, great. And then what I did, was like, I started looking at the other artists, or, or, um, like what I consider people doing artwork online. And it's like, well, that's not going to work because that doesn't make sense. The only thing that what people should be interested in is when you're animating it, and um, you know what is your tricks and things like that. It's like yeah, but some of the animated stuff that I do and the way that I do it, a lot of it's not real high quality unless, and that's when it kind of hit me. Most of the stuff when I draw it, when I vectorize it, then it becomes good quality. I think I went through this with uh, other people before, like. When you see me drawing in paint, it's a big difference. Before you put all of this this stuff into uh, Moho, and that's the only thing I use. I wish you Moho people would um, uh, call me back. Uh, but the only thing I use is, is Moho. Yes, I have the other programs, um, but that's all I use. The only time it kind of clicked with me was like, oh, well, this should make sense. Because once everything's cleaned up, yeah, it does look polished and it does look professional. Okay, 
Well, let me just do the, I'll do the rugged stuff first. Let them see how it begin, how I begin, and then we can go from there. Because with me finishing my project pretty soon, um, I think that's where people can kind of get a clue of like how easy it could be to animate and have a fleshed out story and then just use these basic tools. You don't have to have a lot of money. Um, you don't have to be a great drawer anymore because um, we have the, the AI generated uh, images that you can kind of play around with. Even if, and even if your concept was to play around with it, because um, there'll be stuff that I draw and then I'll put it into Playground and it'll change it. Like, even if you draw uh, like this, right? Whatever you're drawing there, and then you come in and say, oh, well, I wanted to have this kind of background. Whatever prompt that I put here, and, and I think I showed you guys it before when you when you um, import an image here whatever you draw and then you import in here the AI will clean it up for you and it may change the image or the character a little bit but it'll get you a lot closer to something that looks presentable and that's a good thing for people that are not like I'm not a perfect artist right I can draw from from I know what I want it to look like. I know what I want it to look like. I'll just say that. Um, but what was I going into? Oh, transition. That's what it was supposed to be about. All right. So someone asked me about the transition. And how to get it close to the when you're animating it and what you're trying to get a uh, have your concept. I'll just say it like that. Have your concept and, and what your kind of motion you're trying to play into. And uh, um, most of that stuff is in the eyes. You don't really have to do much with the uh, a lot of it as far as the sad part the sad part is always going to be in the eyes and the eyebrows uh, the other thing let me do this real quick before I forget I'm going to jumble a lot of stuff in this video Do a little vector player around here real quick. And you can ask what's the difference between that and the vector. Alright, so copy. So this is not a vectorized image. But we use Inkscape to fix that. Inkscape is free. I always do put the the plug in there for uh, Inkscape, so you can kind of get it. Show you the difference here. So in Inkscape, I'm gonna do this trace here. And I can't remember what would the name was on your your Facebook, but um, the 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 colors and the threshold, all of that stuff is going to be here. I know I don't really go all, uh, over these that much, um, but that's what these numbers are for. Um, the reason why I you're going to click on the remove background is because it's going to remove all the white out of um, when it copies it, it's going to remove all the white out of it. If you don't do that, it's going to keep the white, whatever white is in your image, say right here with this eyeball, it's going to keep that. If you click remove, that's going to be uh, removed, so there won't be any white there. That's what that's for. Smooth is just basically what it, what it, 
says uh, when you have rigged images like where you, it's it's jagged that's what that's gonna do um, I will let me do one without smooth and then without the white so show you a difference here and we're just doing a black background just so we can see what it looks like when we put it on top here so right so let's go back all right so when you're choosing it how many colors do you think this is is basically what you're doing here right so I don't know let's just say you know we got black and white of course so that's two and maybe we have three with all the different shades of brown right so that's five then up here in the hair right we got purple we got green we got a diff that's another three right so that's eight already right and they're gonna be stacked on top of each other so when we go ahead and do the tracing uh, we're gonna click on this here color we're gonna leave smooth out so we can see the difference between the two and threshold is just basically how thick um, the colors will be presented on top of each other the lower you make this the, the thinner it'll be just think about it this way if this was a black line outline right whatever the, th the threshold would be would affect that so if I go to zero right the lines will usually get a lot thinner when this is zero so if you're thinking about you can kind of think about as the outline but it's not just the outline it's basically the the, the thickness of the overall uh, copy of that one color associated with whatever your drawing is right so that's what those are um, I don't really play around with these too much because most of the stuff I'm drawing doesn't have like a, a lot of colors but I've, that's what I've noticed the the lower you make that um, the fill the thinner the fill will be or the overall copying of the image so we'll just keep it at eight colors eight scans uh, scans to me from how I played around with this before it's just kind of same thing as skull at uh, the colors it's how many times it's going to copy that image it's going to scan it eight times um, so let's go ahead and vectorize it I just clicking update and okay All right so it'll show you eight different colors so it becomes kind of like a blob in a way because there's much more colors than eight, right? This is kind of the, the gray that goes with the hair. So this will be the hair color that Inkscape recognized. And Inkscape recognized two different shadings here for the skin, right? Maybe, I think three. Because this is kind of like the skin color as well, right? and this one here I would say it's kind of blended here but this is gonna be for the hair right so it picked up the colors of the hair like so so that's your outline now if you look at it when we said remove background there is no white associated with anything that it collected just basically took out all the white all right so we don't see any white which was here for the eyes right just blanks it all out like that see no white all right so let's go back we're gonna do the same thing we did we're going to remove this here and 
let's go ahead and up the color count to 17. Maybe that'll be a little bit better here. Then we'll click OK. Okay, a little bit better than the, the last time because we got that blob. Let's get these out of the way. We'll see what happened here. So it keeps the white, right? So the whiter the eyes is still a little bit here and the background, which we don't need to remove that. But it did not remove the white in the image. And so it kept the whole background. So when we remove that, it'll just copy it like this with you know, no white, no background at all. At first I thought it was just the background, but it takes out anything white. All right, now let's go ahead and, so the smooth here, we'll just do that one and then I'll go back to what I was doing before about the drawing. All right, so we'll put smooth, remove background, and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and up it to 26 colors you know what let's go crazy let's go 32 so now Inkscape is going to try to recognize all the different shades of color and probably less than 32 but let's see what happens click OK alright it's not too bad blend it a little bit better put these side by side uh, it's pretty similar it's not that that different but 32 32 so these will be basically this this drawing is now stacked with 32 different colors which it says is associated with the uh, the image so it's basically trying to pick up every different color that this image could be as far as the combination of our original image like so so trying to figure out oh okay you say this image here, your original image has 32 scans. It's trying to recognize every different brown, every different green that's associated that with the image. And I don't think there are 32 colors here. So it'll kind of try to get it as close as possible. All right. So that's basically how it does that. I always use the stack version of this. You don't have to have stacked. You can have it um, where it just kind of copies it. Uh, click it like this, and we'll see the difference here. And then we'll click OK. And these are not stacked at all. So it's no solid. It's just basically taking the color that it thinks is part of this. colors here and instead of stacking them all together where it's just a full color right just separates it instead of stacking the whole thing kind of I think of it kind of like a shadow it'll just give you just the pieces that it believes those colors are all right so 32 different colors And I'll just break it down like so. All right. Um, usually, the reason why I use this is because I can get this as close as I want it. And when I do my outline, 
um, I'll usually use this here to do the outline and well I'll usually bring this over here and uh, I'll get rid of everything in the center here Then when we vectorize or come and vectorize it, uh, I'll just use or create the outline that way. And the, what I usually do is I'll change the color so I can kind of see it. And then I'll lighten up the fill. kind of see it here and then can start to fix my how I want the outline to look and depending on you know how long I want this to take I can go back and try to vectorize a, a cleaner uh, version of the image where I will do just I'll cut out everything where this won't take that long so I would go back here and and you could take this you know, duplicate it here and I'll just cut out everything so once I know what the color will be like and everything like that it doesn't really matter to me about the outline because I can come in and color it uh, later on but I'll basically cut out everything here Oops. I'll usually leave, sometimes I'll leave the, the eyebrow part so I can kind of remember what that curve will be. And I usually leave the tip of the nose. And the point of the eyes, usually I'll leave that as well. Because that'll give me, I just need to know what the the curve of the eye will be and the mouth of the, the nose I'll leave the nose because that'll give me of where I know the nose should be and we don't need this other eyebrow like some get that out of there oops just cut this here And uh, this is only for people that uh, are need that clean vector look. Uh, so whenever you draw it out, you can uh, change the template every, any way you like.
and again it doesn't have to be uh, super perfect and this is um, for people who uh, like the that uh, outlining and then you could change how uh, thick you want your lining to be as well I do that sometimes so so basically like that and then we'll go ahead and get it into just copy um this is uh paint.net people ask me that why aren't you drawing it with your hand uh i just got used to using paint.net and i just always been using it all right. so i apologize all right we'll paste this here like so and change this to two now this is what um, personally I would do for uh, high quality uh, animation um, so it's not doesn't give that drawn by hand look and the coloring would take uh, a very long time once you create the puppet for uh, all your stuff when you want to get it into here um, trust me you can keep all of those different pieces because usually what I uh, and this is not vectorized uh, so no one get upset with me here I'm just using an example when we put a vectorized image into when you put a vectorized image into uh, the moho the quality is uh, I don't I don't even People, when I say this, they think I'm exaggerating. I'm not. It looks like a regular animated feature that you would see on any channel. And the stuff that we finish, which we're not going to be presenting, uh, um, the stuff that we finished, it looks like that. And you cannot tell the difference. And, and we look hard at it. We compared it to, uh, um, I would say, recent films. The stuff that you're able to do from Moho, even if you wanted to implant it somewhere else, uh, it will be able to take that digital image and enhance it as well. So the, that that if you're worried about your quality or your style or anything like that, um, they have programs that are able to generate a higher quality, even if you wanted to not use Moho. Uh, but this program Moho, if I don't know, I've seen it. People will make animations, put it on YouTube, and they get more views than a lot of these full length projects that I've seen out here. Do not downplay what this is able to do for you, especially if you're trying to get out there and have people see your work. There are a couple of major films. I don't, when they say this, I'm not sure if it's 100% accurate because I know that there's a filter project, uh, process that goes through for a very high quality um, uh, production. Um, but when they tell uh, I can't remember which one I can't remember if it was it was a couple of programs I don't want to lie and say it was Claws or something else but there's a couple of programs that they said they use this and that's all they use um, I don't think it's all they use but matter of fact if you use this program and you are a animator they will take you serious and and we've I've seen the way it looks when I have vectorized uh, images that I've uh, input into Moho, and I can't tell the difference comparably. I'll I'll do that probably one day. All right. So what was that? Okay, back. So um so here we'll go ahead and vectorize this here. Just click OK. Hey, what is going on? Can I break it? There we go. <laughs> so I thought I did something wrong. So then this. Did it just make one color? Uh, let's do three then. Let's do actually yes, three four. Let's 
Mm, we'll use this one in black. And then you can go in and you can make that it's as thick as you want it or as thin as you want it. like a Nike it's not that crazy and um, with the eyebrow I always do this there we go um, I use fill to like duplicate this Go like that. Now, if you want a thinner outline, you can change it as well. Just go over to the fill. Make it as thick as thin as you want. Mine, I usually do 50. Not too thick. Let's try 30. Mm, still too thick. Let's do 10. That's about right. Um, and you can put this in uh, Moho and just do all these vectors in Moho if you like as well. Um, Usually on the, like, I use uh, Inkscape as a board as well for stuff that I um, want to use later. So I can, I can change all the stuff that I, in here. Just depends on what I'm doing. Uh, usually all of these, I can just change them to round like this. Play around with them like that as well. Oh, that was a mistake. You don't want to cut the whole thing out, just these. There we go. And this is isolated. Oh, and whenever you have to make another one, just edit, duplicate, and then mirror it over here, like so. You can change the angles where you need them to be. Whatever angle you need. And separate that, keep it over here. Um, I sometimes will do that with the eye as well. Just depends on how thick I want to make it. Uh, I can play around with it. In some ways you are redrawing it, but uh, not always. And again, whenever I want to uh, clone this, I always will use the fill to do that. 
and that's not uh, Swanson. That's not how you do that. Okay. <laughs> this a little bit thinner why is this not I think I've I, the settings on my thing have been changed let me see here cut you know what I think it is it's the M yeah I think that's what it is so I'm not gonna play around with that now since I'm already doing the video. Do that later. So whenever I uh, go back, where is my original? Yeah, there it is. Let's go ahead and get all of this out of the way. So we're just using that as a update. And this one I'll cut. It's over here. So, um, now that we have the pieces, uh, I sometimes will match it, and again, I'll make this clear like this, and then I can go in and get it as close as I want it. And whenever you do uh, erase these, it doesn't really affect your, your image that much. It just will smooth it out for you. And I'll do that here as well. Change the color so we can kind of see. And we'll clear it all out. And then we can kind of go over it like that. Just make sure it's clear enough. Whenever you do change it, it helps also with the curves as well. And you want to come in and get it really close. And we'll cut this, make it a point. And a little thinner, can't really. And that's right there. This is thinner, like there. We should be around. And this looks right. Yeah. And this is a little bit thinner. Move this in. Right about there. All right. And now that we have what we need, um, Sometimes I will play around with this if I need to. Depends on where um, or how close I want it to be to the other one. I can. I kind of use shapes as a cutout tool. So basically, when I put a shape on top, like so. When I go in and do a fill, it'll just fill this one little area here. Someone asked me about well, why do I do that. It's just basically think of it as clay dough. Um, I kind of mess around with the pieces and you know 
pick off pieces so if I think this is not as close as I want it and I need to get it a little bit closer I'll play around with it that way as well because the angle of the face if you look at it it's usually going to be uh, like a touch of eyebrow that would be poking out a little bit if you were looking at it from that angle so whenever we do go back whatever I don't like I can change it but these are going to be all separate pieces anyway so right so we'll just have those hanging out there because those are going to be pieces that will not be part of the overall head and then I'll go through and match this up to where I really need it to be and the only part that we're going to separate is going to be the hair so let's get the eyebrows out of the way we have that that's how we kind of want them to be uh, and again on this here when I want to make uh, or put pieces together whatever you do here as far as like the overall eye you can change that as much as you want by playing around with it um, most of the time these pieces based on the angle we're going to be doing when we show the emotion of the the character uh, and I think this scene the character is in a sitting in a spaceship riding from which I remember which one was it? Six eight four, six eight five, six eight three. Okay, and so there's a window. It's gonna be in the back, right about here. Oh, forgot to take that off. And there's a window, not a round one. So there's a window right about here. And that angle's gonna be a little bit different. And so the only part that we could probably end up using for that to where we don't need a lot of uh, animation right so this window should be here and what I want to show is going to be reflective in the eyes and then just on this side of the face so when we do get into the blending parts I'll show you what that should look like. Let's go ahead and take a little piece here. I'm just going to do this on the fly real quick. So you can kind of get over. Yeah. I'm saying. So let's go ahead and get this, this paste here. So on the visuals to this here. place a window right about I think it ends there right right about there and, and let's see make this change this color slightly And this is just for my angle so I can kind of get feel for how high it was going to be. 
think it was about here. I'm not gonna open that other program for that. Yeah, I do think it's there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the reason I'm, I'm just flushing this out is this just this part is actually for me, so I remember what I'm doing. And whenever I use Inkscape, I use it as a, a, a blackboard kind of in a way. So it reminds me of where everything needs to be. And these are just window streaks. You don't have to worry about this part. You can ignore me on this. Um, but we will get to, back to the uh, the character's emotion on the scene. And I use black a lot because it gets me kind of visually in tune with what's going to be happening in the with the character a little bit. Um, so, what I'm going to end up doing here is I was about to snapshot it, but it's already going to I'm already recording the screen, so I'll come back to that. Um, so, reflectively, you would leave this. Uh, this side could be a little bit darker depends on you know what you're trying to get across So whenever you're doing that, like the split, as far as uh, coloring, your image, based on wherever you are on this side, basically this is in a vehicle. So on this side here, be a little bit even if you go for the the background shadow of where the head's gonna be because uh, you would do that as well and this is just for like forming it this is not like a uh, technique that you have to use again anything that I put on here it's stuff that I think it's my opinion that's all so let's fix that And you can do this in the, the moha as well, like you can attach um, the shadows to the actual whenever the head moves, right? So if you think about it, technically in my world these will be detailed shadows that I would attach to the, the head. So, um, and these things can be time consuming, but again it's up to you. You don't want to do the shadows and be that in intricate with whatever you're doing. You don't have to be. 
just it's going to be based on your taste and, and what you think you would want to see visually oh that was the other um, yeah, uh, there was just thought of that um, some people were asking me about the difference between the art uh, th like the artists and then there's like a um, what's the, I don't there's a name for it I know they have in Hollywood but it's basically the person that puts um, the scene together um, uh, co like concept stuff but what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll look at something you've finished and they'll be like what about this you know what I mean? That's what they'll say. <laughs> most of the time, that's all they'll say. It's like, hey, th this doesn't look right. Because most when you're drawing it in your brain, you, you're seeing um, the flushed out character already. So even when you're drawing it, you all may miss the shadows. You may, you know, miss the light reflection because visually you have already see it. So you always need that person will come in and be like, I guess you could look at his art direction or there's a lot of different words they use for that person and it, depending on you know what other things they've been on will kind of peek at what status or where they come in at um, but those people are very important because the artists um, may be doing something and through your the way that you already see everything because to you being the artist it's clear you'll miss some things that's why you need that person uh, someone was asking about different titles um and i think what i'll do is i'll do a video about all the breakdowns because all of those names that you see when the credits are running those people are important you just don't know who they are i don't even think there's a ward place for those those uh like i've heard like visual effects yeah 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 i'm not talking about that person i'm talking about the, the, the person that's like well i guess technically it would be visual effects because that would come into play um but w what i meant to say is this they're not always the artist and those people are not always the same person um so uh someone's asking me about that on the on that facebook thing we were doing so whenever you're doing the uh, uh scene here for instance so if if I know this is going to be um, the sh the shadow and it's going to be based on what how you you want it to look, whatever you do as far as the shadowing, um, that plays with the mood of a character, right? So if I know, for instance, this is what I want to see, right? As far as we can put that in right and this character is looking out the window right the, the part you would want to um, have work for that mood is going to be that as well so when this character is changes as far as like uh, let me go back here so let's go right so we're already gonna have the eye concept right so one of that mood changes whenever we do any kind of transition it's going to play a big part of it so if i know that this character is going to be the second scan of that it's going to be here we're going to pull we would we're, we're, we'll play with those shadows because then that effect is going to change so we go back right and he's looking out the window now well let's go in and import it the other even though it's not flushed out here let's go and import it here All right. let's put the shadow on top where it should be All right so whenever we do any and that change as far as the, the reflective or even if it's a mood change um, that's what I would play with I would play with the um, the shadow a little bit more even if it's an off shadow 
um, I don't know, whatever the mood, for me personally, it's always going to be color and shadow. Because that's going to change everything, right? It, it's going to play a big part in what, when you're trying to do emotion as well. Uh, because just a head reflection or just a head turn like right, that. Now we're when you see the character in your head automatically, or if you deliver this the right way, in your head automatically, you see the character do that. The character is thinking of, it's not there in the the, the ride or it's there in this particular spaceship. That character is not in the spaceship anymore, right? You know it's because it, it, in this in this scene, there's going to be someone driving the character, and the, and the driver is talking. And at first, they're having a conversation. They're talking about some stuff, and he replies with a few words. Right? Then the 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 driver actually says something, which makes the character reflect. Right? So once you get that that this looks weird. For to me <laughs> once you get that that transition um, from you know this to this I'm I'm not paying attention to you at that point I'm reflecting and thinking about something else um, and the way that I would do that would be even if it's a car ride, and maybe when he turns the head, um, we can have a like, because when he pass things, and, uh, he's gonna be driving technically from the city to a, a like a country place. Um, I would maybe use like a red reflection here, or some kind of mood change where even if this is a solid green, like you know, that's the. The, the shadowing that I'm doing right for me personally green is better uh, when you want happy scenery you can lighten it up usually you could do that with yellows or you know whites things like that but if you're trying to reflect and have some kind of mood usually for me it'll either be gray or I I'd like green um, for whatever reason you know that dark green instead of dark gray um, I get a different like feeling when it comes to that but that's how you would basically um, line that up so what I would do right here we have the green whenever we get to this one here or we're looking out I would probably use like a red reflection so I would turn this dark down and then I would have just this piece here. Let me see if I can put this in here real quick. And just have like a if I do red, that's going to be weird on the chair, wouldn't it? Yeah, it might. We'll have to make the chair darker. Um, so, I would probably use something like red just on that part. All right. And even if we're, you know, going to taking this drive or whatever. Um, this reflection would not come off of just the mood it would be like oh we just passed a you know restaurant that's using um, you know a red sign or whatever it is but that would also be your way to transition the mood from what was happening to something uh, something totally different and you could use the car ride as a way to to, to do that because you got the mood you would keep this here right or in some cases you could probably uh, you know end up making this darker 
to get it more of that, uh, you know, a bold, bold look. Oh, the other thing is this. Whenever you do do this, for me personally, make sure you keep this uh, open. And messed up here. One second. Uh, make sure you keep the the eyes uh, out out of the uh, out of the tent. Um, I've seen a couple things where you see that happen. So basically, um, and even if you are doing the the emotion thing. make sure that you always have a uh, a visual for the, uh, for the eye because technically this right here especially if you're in a driver environment um, that right there should be a lot lighter and you can kind of play around with that a little bit so whenever I do you know get the eye concept and everything in here set up around there um, So even if your shadow is, and this is just a quick thing, even with your, before you even get to that point, and there, she's right there. Um, make sure this, this is not shadowed as well. And technically, if you wanted to also um, try to keep everything as far as like the, sh the shading correct this little part of the nose um, you could probably do it like a little light bridge here you know where you know this side of the nose is going to be kind of trouble but you want to keep that same uh, flow and usually with the mouth uh, if the character is speaking things like that you can kind of use a like a small reflection on 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 that area as well because when the mouth moves it will kind of change the way that shadow will look so whenever you do get all your stuff well I'm speaking of me whenever <laughs> get everything vectorized for my th this character um, that's what I would mess around with the eyebrows is the is the other thing Sorry about that. Um, um, but the the shadow. Just make sure you do keep it in line with where that the that face line would be, because this should be. And most of the time, you'll see this. You see how the shadow is with the eye. Most of the time, that towel will be right. And whenever you do um, do any kind of transition. The, I would say the best way to do it is going to be through the eyes. Uh, you could, you know, have 
the way that the eye lo uh, the eyes are uh, kind of highlighted you could um, mess around with that a lot just based on um, what, what you're trying to get across because then you can also use the eyes of, as kind of like a uh, a reflection as well uh, and kind of change the way that that color will come in and if you want to get detailed about it when you are riding through this this car you can change these reflections on the eye um, from like light to dark uh, you get that reverse kind of thing that happens like you know what animals have that reflective kind of uh, thing going on um, you can keep that in mind as well this one here this is not going to be the eye color for this but I'll show you what I mean a little bit here So what you would play around would be that piece here in the center, right? So whenever you're driving and you want to have like that reflective thing going on, you could use just that part right there for the eyes to kind of give you that uh, effect in, in the animation. So, <clears throat> and that would be the only transition you would probably need. So basically you would just Instead of having, because some people will do the whole head that way. Instead of doing that, you just basically, you know, have a couple uh, different uh, of this type of ring that you, you would have already created, right? Maybe, I don't know. Six different ones, right? So you can see it kind of transition in and out. And that's the only thing you would have to do with that, right? So whenever, um, even if if we're doing the transition on on that mood part, and you know we're no longer paying it. Oh, this is the other thing. There are shadows on the the eyes, well, which would be here. So it would be usually it'll stop. Should stop right out there, I think, right? Right about there. And then also a little bit at the bottom because of the Picking on the shadow side of it, right? So you would have. Um, just remember 
to to make all of that kind of fit in and then also here right because edit and I'm just gonna do this real quick where you can kind of give a feel of what I'm doing it's not the full the full thing here so Um, but remember all of those 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 little especially if you're trying to do uh, someone's asked me about the emotional scene and all the different things I would use that um, because the more detailed that um, your close-ups gonna look especially if the character is you're trying to do a transition uh, the more detailed you make the the eye even though that everything else in the outline um, people re will remember that um, so make sure that you do all your shadows where they need to be you know make it take your time on that that piece right um, and, and the more you take your time as far as getting the you know all those little things uh, done uh, together whenever you do start having the um, the tears come <coughs> you could use that same way of uh, developing that so you would basically do the same thing let's take this outline here and duplicate and they would be at the very bottom here would not be blurry this is usually it'll be as clean as you probably would want to get it depicting on what you're going for <coughs> I almost choked myself today So those things would always start here, um, and for me, detail-wise, um, and then you could kind of change this whatever you like. So, whenever we do see the, the the tears start to come. Um, a lot of times some people do more blue uh, I try to make this as dark as possible because blue to me seems like it's happy I don't know happy tears but I would want to make that as close as you know we know it's tears but you want to make it as close as you can get it as dark as you can get it um, because if it's too bright for me personally again this is just me it looks weird so whenever the tears come all of these colors here will be uh, you can blend those in and that's how you can um, kind of form it in that way so whenever we do see those transition these colors are going to be the, the things that kind of change uh, the darker you make this here for as your and, and again what I'm, what I'm doing here, when people ask me questions about what ideas that would I give them for like mood changes, that's basically the concept of the video, which I should have said at the beginning. Uh, at the beginning, um, but I think I was rambling not at the beginning. Um, these are all things I would think about basically when I'm doing the scene, and you can't always use the same things over and over again, but you want to do anything that's going to get you where you're paying attention to the, the face of the character you can do it a little bit by what the outside looks like by making it a terrible like maybe it's a graveyard scene where there's a lot of people hurt like you could do it that way when it comes to what I call it like a wide shot when you're trying to show emotion close up 
you need to pay attention to the eyebrows, the eyes, um, and the face, because that's gonna sh that's gonna tell you everything you uh, every everything that you need. And whenever you're doing anything where it's emotion, try to have a lot of uh, I want to say a lot, but you want a lot of shadows, and that will help you in the development of the scene. Because then you don't you won't have to do as much work as when you're trying to write the dialogue. It could be less dialogue, which would be more impactful if you get the the visual uh, uh, part correct. So with the tear, the close up of the shadow. Oh, this what edit undo. Um, the same shadow effect that I would I would do with the the eye. Uh, make sure this is all the way up top. There we go. Uh, the same shadow effect when whenever you're doing the the eyebrow, and this would be separate in animation. Uh, animation. What did I just say? animation? So this part here. Um, whenever you're showing anything close up. All of those little things people are going to notice. They're not going to notice if it's not there, right? Okay, we don't need to. So, when you do the close ups, those things are going to uh, play a, a very important part. I've seen two, like, whenever you're playing around with your animation, um, Play around with it when you when you either add or take things away to give it that effect, right? Especially if you're gonna be, um, you know, if the character's sad or it's the the shadows and everything like that um, should come into play a big part because you can recognize those things on your own face, um, even if you are not the character in a way where you're not maybe you're not feeling the 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 character. The, at that point it doesn't matter. You're gonna be when you do anything close up, just keep that in mind. Right? It doesn't have to be like overly done, but those little uh those those uh subtle shadows and uh, you know the the like especially under here right this part where um, it's not all the way covered for because that's where the eyelid would be, right? But anything you could do, as far as uh, the blending of the the different shadows that you're gonna be seeing, like it's not just one pale look, even though the hair is kind of outlined in that way. Um, but you can play around with those, with adding, uh, you know, the shadow or a blur or anything like that to uh, also get that point across and whenever you do see the difference in it you can kind of play around with it and see what you know looks best a lot of times um, that's what I'll do and you know whatever kind of uh, you know concept I'm looking at or from like okay that what else can we add maybe we should take away things like that but that's all going to be done uh, in the shadows. It's all going to be done with that. So remember, around the outlines, you know, when you're doing anything as far as emotion, remember the darker areas are going to be things people are not going to be paying attention to. Right. So remember, there's a shadow here under the, like that little eyebrow right here right there's also one here um, that one that runs right in between the nose that's a little bit darker um, you can play around with that and then uh, also play around with the, the the colors of the eyes as well um, you may maybe get a different feel you know if the, the you know the eye color is a little uh, let's see here let's play around with some other colors here uh, it just depends on you know what what you're uh, kind of trying to get across. So two ways on this. Like if the eye is a little bit darker, right? 
that part won't matter. So the eye a little bit around, a little bit darker here. You can play around with, you know, all kinds of different ways to get different variations of that, uh, what you think it should look like. But again, you know, take your time, play around with it, see what works, and then what doesn't work. And the thing you could do is when you're doing it, see if your mood changes, see if you can, there's any attachment you feel uh, to the character. And then, you know, make changes as you go. All right? Shadow, shadow, shadows. So I'll just say that. Um, but I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I think that yeah, we went over the transition parts and all that. I guess the other thing uh, I'll probably go over next is when you get everything vectorized and then you know coloring and keeping it uh, as close as possible. But yeah, that's what I would do. Oh, um, when you are doing it and you're drawing different transitions and stuff like that for your character, uh, you can play with uh, all different types of things when it comes to that whenever you do do you, the the outline for the heads and things like that when you want to uh, make those move what you can do is go here we'll just make another head from this head and copy put it on top and edit and paste there we go. Alright, so what you would can do here, and this will be the movement or anything else you're going to be doing. Um, first of all, keep the keep the outline. Show you what I mean by that. Let's get rid of all of this out of the way. Go ahead and duplicate this. Well, let's cut cut this out real quick. Um, if you're trying to get rid of some pieces that are just hanging around, and you got a good outline, you could just uh, do this here. Just fill with the paint bucket. Make sure this is not on normal, and this is on overwrite. You know, this only works when you have a good outline, so just keep that in mind, right? Just click here and it'll cut it out. Override, fill, and just make sure this is clear. So if you put it on normal, nothing happens because it's not going to be filling. But when we put it on override, there you go. And what it'll do is it'll cut out everything except for that outline but this is going to be a quick thing here about the way that you move the face so we'll need a couple of things to stay the same all right so the same thing with everything else we kind of did in the vector side of it we're going to do here. So let's go ahead and take the eyes. I'll just take one of them because we're going to be, I'll show you an easier way to do it. And uh, we're just basically creating a new layer. So you just click add layer and make sure it's on the top like so and then you go to the the one that you want to kind of take pieces from 
like so. And this would sometimes what you would do for laying a character anyway. Because those are the pieces that uh, are going to move. So the eyebrows, the eyes. And we'll go ahead and grab the nose here. Just like so. Edit, copy. Oh, not cut. Undo. Copy. Create another layer here on top of that and click paste. Okay, like so. I think we got everything we need. So let's go ahead and cover up some stuff here. So we'll have another layer. We're not going to cut or, or kind of blaspheme on this, this head here, this concept of the head. So we're just going to color on top of it, all right? So we go here, make sure we get our blend, which is this color here. All right, and go back to the paintbrush. Make sure this is on normal. And we're just going to do a little coloring on top here. So we'll do it. So, Oh, uh, this is a, uh, his hair. This is actually, it's a weird thing I wanted to do. So he'll have hair up here, but all of this stuff that's blending in with it, it's a tattoo, but can't really tell if you're not paying attention there. So yeah, this part here is going to be the, um, the hair where it'll kind of blow in the wind. And it'll be kind of like a mohawk that'll end there. But this is all going to be like tattoo. And he, he has like a spike mohawk that goes all the way uh, around like so and let's go ahead and color this in here and the other thing you would take out would be the mouth here because we don't right, so there we go make this a better outline or a cleaner outline um, on the outline what I'll do is here the closer the face is to this this is stuff you learn a long time ago about drawing and things like that Alright, so that outline will be a little bit thicker on this side. And then when I do the other side of the head, I'll just go to one. Like this. And that'll be a little bit thinner than the the head that's supposed to be technically closer to you. If you're looking at it from that angle here. So And again, um, you don't have to do it that way. Whenever I say anything, it's just uh, for what I uh, kind of think. So 
the lines over there are going to be a little bit thinner than the ones over here. So go back to two. And anything closer. And you really have to do go crazy on this because, like before, I told you when it turned into a vector, all of that stuff will get cleaned up and kind of straightened out for you. fill in here
one second. I guess I could work on this later. And uh, when you do your outline in here, before you get to the vector, it doesn't matter because you'll be able, to, like I said, you'll be able to fix the whatever curvature you want. But you want to make it as dark as possible because when you come back to the blend part, you can uh, fade them as much as you like. And the same thing with the uh, color blending, you don't have to worry about that too much. Because when you vectorize it, it'll look a little bit smoother. Alright, so I think we've got everything uh, erased out of there.
and uh, that as well. Whenever you do the blending on there, again, don't worry about it in here. This is just for me to remember what I was doing. And uh, the reason you gotta make this a little bit brighter before you get into the vector is so those uh, the dark lines stand out. And that's why I'm not blending up here. Uh, we'll do that in the in the Inkscape. So let's go ahead and conceal this eyebrow. Then we'll do some modifications. So on the shadow one here, it's always the same thing. Remember, there was a shadow here, and then there's got to be one when it comes to that eyebrow there. This will be a little bit darker because the nose is uh, going to be closer to us, so to speak. And where do we get our other pieces here? We can carve this out a little bit more here. And um, this is just going to be for showing you the transition for the movements. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. 
Make sure that's supposed to be right about there. Right. And it's close enough. And uh, what you do here is you can duplicate this eye. And just flip it like mirror type of thing here. And we'll just cut this out. Again, in this we don't have to be perfect because we're just going to be showing some different translations. And this is um, how I usually play around with it. Show you real quick here. Same thing with the eyebrow. You can duplicate that here. Let's just switch it over. Um, and this can be helpful for you to 
play around with as well. Remove some stuff here. E1 is I1. E2. And what we're going to do is we're going to not worry about masking it, so we're making it perfect. We're going to play around with some different facial expressions here. Do that for I'm round one, I'm two. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this. We're gonna do a little bit different from what I was gonna do before. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It'll just be easier for you to see what I'm doing. And kind of let it be your sketchboard if you like. Don't worry about everything being perfect because when you do the, uh, the cleanup, you'll see all your ideas kind of fleshed out. But this is what... Um, I use to play around with facial expressions.
so so let us see kind of like the, the eyes there and we'll just do it uh, for this real quick we'll do a cutout version And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And whenever we do the layout for anything, um, I usually will use a box from the ear to the side of the head there. And try to line up your eyes. All right, so can line that up real quick. match that up as close as you can get it. And if we look at we're under the under the actual the coloring here. So we're right below it. see where this lines up here so if you look at the way the, the head is shaped 
try to get as close as you get here. So if we don't see it, we can move the box. Or what we like. All right. And this is only if you're trying to get everything uh, perfect before you get it into the Inkscape for the cutout and everything like that. You can also do it this way as well. Just copy this part, edit copy. And you kind of play around with your size here. So if we use the box for the outline, right? Let's clear this other part out real quick. And what you uh, can do, you can do this in Inkscape as well. Um, change everything that you want to kind of change there. And um, you'll just keep whatever template you're going to end up keeping. You can uh, always come back and change whatever you like. 
So when do we go back? And we need to play around with some stuff. Make sure the eyeballs are uh, underneath uh, the head part here. Just like the, this head. And eyebrows will be on top, like so. We'll fix this little outline real quick and then start moving things around. On the, uh, the outline of the eye, I always make it as thin as possible so I can make it one. And then we'll just color these in. And this is all without the shading, all without anything. So that part will be that, and the eyeballs, I can't say, I think that's that way. And then what you could do is you can just make a, a white outline. And this is going to be, you can name it, white. Background. And whenever you come back to fill it in, it'll be uh, make sure it's behind the head. And then the eye should be on top. You know what? We're going to make these identical. So I'll duplicate. And so I'll just look closer. So wait, it would look. So whenever you want to make transition for the head you're technically going to be moving the head either down up right so you can duplicate that So if this is transitioned here, we'll make that a little bit lighter so we can see it. Right, and this is the original. Now, when you start to move things as far as uh, up, down, all those things like that, and you just want to use the, the outline as a template You would just change, uh, I mean, you could technically change a lot of it, but 
the hair, the outline part here, and the ear. That would be separate from the everything else. So we would take this, and you can just basically peel uh, whatever you need, peel away of this part of the face. where it's kind of like just the hair and the head on the back. Kind of like so. And then, we'll have the other one here, which is without the hair. We'll just trim all of this out. And don't worry about their spacing. So when you are doing any kind of change, even if it's subtle, the most of the time the things that will be changed are the eyes. But in this case, even if you're looking down, it's push. Uh, make sure this pivot point here is right where you want the pivot point for the neck to be. So when you move it like so. It should be right about there. So whenever you're doing any subtle changes or anything like that, <coughs> what you can do is just make a whole bunch of templates for different movements. All right? So whenever you bring this head back, whatever subtle changes you're gonna make, you can do it there. And you could do it by shrinking it down. All right, and changing whatever you want it to, to do here. All right, and it'll be s small changes for whatever transition you're gonna make. All right. So whenever you're playing around with the face part, this part that we left here would be the thing that we would arrange around it. Right? So you got a head here and then you kind of fit it in where you need it to fit. So it'll allow you to just move this any way you like and then you would just adapt this part. Because technically this is not going to get larger unless you're doing a far away shot, but this is not going to get larger. It'll just modify small movements. But you do, you could do the face part of it first. And whatever, are like subtle as you want to make it. So when you end up finalizing all of those, get this out of the way here. whatever small facial movements you make that you created Let's see here. you can adapt to it quickly so in the case of the the head and the hair right we do create a different angle for everything right because we're going to be moving the eyes Right, going to be moving the ear, and nose, and, and the mouth, and then the eyebrows as well. So what you can do is just keep playing around with the ear, uh, the different movements, with these cutout pieces that you already made. And even with the hair, you can cut that out. All right, and then you play around with these two pieces, and then also you'll play around with the the eyebrows as well. So, 
whatever transition you're going to make for the uh, the eyebrows. You can do those transitions. If you need to make the eyebrows, the angle change, do that as well. So whenever you do move the head, things like that, all of these pieces, those the the face is not going to change. You want to make sure the eye and uh, the nose can stay relevant. Sometimes I'll move the nose, but basically the eyes. Um, whenever you do start moving the face around, just keep in mind that those can change as well because you, you have the ability to, to uh, shrink those things and make those modifications same way you would do here but the um for like the head movement and all that yeah let's get this out of here. cut this we don't want this So whenever you're doing those those changes or whatever changes you end up doing, keep that in mind. Make sure this is always on top here. So let's see. This one will be here. So this would be up top. Eyebrows. Yeah. So this should be all the way at the top. This here. So when you do make your movements you do anything where you're switching angles um, oh for this one also make sure you you can do it the opposite way but you can also use the hair let's get that ear out of the way so if you want to make one without the ear So when you do you make your movements, no matter if you're shrinking it, as far as turning away or looking up, all of these can be uh, manipulated in that way. and shrinking or making it big most of the time if you're doing subtle movements they're not going to be that big um, so that's how you would kind of change and make different uh, subtle movements for a character so when you finalize it and then you do come in here when it's all completed you can check it by that way too but I'm not going to do that because it's just not part of your eyes but um, when you're doing that just take your time stuff like that when you're doing the shadows or the shading or anything else when you do the movements you can track what everything else is going to happen for us you know and don't worry about the the uh the out when, whenever you come back and do your coloring you can fix all that stuff and angles or of any kind can be um, completed that way and this make sure you uh, you take your time whenever you're doing it and paying attention to the, you know how big because if you look at this um, I'll fix it end up fixing this a little bit but if you look at the head you'll see that the heads off a little bit so when we do the transition it makes the head look a little bit bigger right a little bit too bigger because you know when he does that he's looking out the window go here right and the other thing um whenever you do the side part you can cut whatever you like and just kind of manipulate the face that way um, but make sure you do the cutout uh, for whatever you're going to to transition on this one technically uh, so I transitioned the, the uh, nose if you look at the nose changed a little bit right um, 
look at the eyebrow where we shrink the eyebrow on that side so slight movement from the eyebrow Let's see if we get closer here so we see that there you'll see the shading in it as well changes a little bit um, whenever you're drawing the side part because remember at this angle you can't really see the total side of the head right so whenever you do do this transition just make sure uh, the shadings and everything like that and what you can do is if you're trying to get it perfect what you'll go and do is do a little grab right here edit copy and right so let's see and I go far too far down and it's this one yeah there we go alright so edit paste alright so we did we have this little piece here right so when we do this transition This is the part here, right? That goes right where the oh, I, did I mess this up? Oh yeah, that's the angle. So this technically would be this piece here, right? So you would just basically stretch this piece. slightly and then you can stretch it as much as you like here you want to just make sure that it's all close as you can get it So if I just need that piece, and I'm trying to get it a lot closer. Move all of this here. Kind of see how that looks whenever you do do the, the turn. And then you can either do the shading or trade it into something different. So if you look at the that circle part here, right? So this circle part matches up to right about there so when you come in and you do want to see you know that change here whatever piece because you can tell where the eye kind of comes down here so when we do have that the draw drops a little bit this technically should be longer. So it'll just more the side of the head. Right? Wherever you do your blending, it doesn't really matter. Because you'll know what the spacing is on these if you've done it by hand. But whatever pieces that you need to move in place for it to look like you know any changes you can do that and again you can trim out whatever you like or whatever you you know whatever you don't like as far as the look so if you're gonna you know 
just want to see this piece extended out not kind of mess with anything else here you can just trim it and then keep playing around with it to uh, you get it like you want so technically that piece would just get a little bit longer right where but this you see where this line is You're keeping in line with that right because that's the part where that line see this the line of the head moves so whenever I do put this here like so what did I just do? oh that's <laughs> the wrong one if it should keep in line with the where the face is right so we have this that keeping in line here now with the little piece we added right So, slight angle here, but it goes around where the face is, where that curve comes. Where that curve is. And then, how far did it move? Alright, keep in mind with the chin and all this, you can stretch that out later if you want. Alright, but just play, you can also play around with like how either subtle you want it to be or not uh, usually you can do that without you know put an outline here like right about there or where it needs to be and you can kind of keep checking on the movement so we see that line here keeping in concert with that and even if you drop the head you can angle it oh wrong one <laughs> so even when you uh, want to angle this wherever the angle is for the what is going on here undo select okay yeah so whatever angle that you're trying to get to where this will match up the way you want it to look and you can tell you know this thin line is still going to be here but it'll stretch out so you'll see a little bit more of the uh, the back of the head but you start with that line there and you can kind of eye it to see how thick this little this line here is, could be so and keep tweaking it and, and till you get it to where you you want it to be and you just keep making uh, as many of these as you like so when you do and you'll be able to keep all of these um, and you'll get better at detailing it and, and filling in the shading and everything like that um, but you can practice in there so when you do have any other you know parts that you're doing or moving or changing like this one um, something I was using uh, earlier whatever you want to move you can move it and so when you do get to the point where you are doing like uh, the other vectors and everything if you want to just cut out the hair and just keep this open and just when you're moving the hair you'll make things longer or shorter um, but you'll you'll keep all of those and uh, keep in mind whenever you're doing any transition uh, I recommend using you know for me line and uh, lines and boxes kind of guide you so we're you know you can kind of see where you're at when it comes to the, the movement in the head and make eyes little or larger as they move but if you have a, you know if you're looking at the yellow box here it'll give you an idea of how that's you know either large uh, it should be 
and if you're keeping in concert, um, concert with the eyes um, you can make a little box around the eyes as well kind of keep it guided in that way um, it doesn't really need you don't really need this if you're doing so if you keep this angle for this particular head here um, and any movements you got where they're either sideways up or down uh, you don't really need to do any of that you only need to do that when you want to have those subtle changes like someone uh, looking and usually that's done in like four frames so if you want to really get crazy you can you know the frames and everything like that you can you know modify but don't be afraid to you know cut the face up and then have these boxes and outlines there to kind of guide you um, so you're not too off when it comes to the movements and then also the visual of the actual character as well won't change too dramatically um, and over time you'll get better at it you'll be a lot faster at it when you keep kind of uh, playing with it but that's what I use I, I use boxes or I use lines so those changes like this would be the line for the nose right and you know that nose is going to be a little bit smaller right but how much do you want it to stick out make a line right where the face is for the other one like here right and then think about how far you want that nose to stick out there right and you can do the boxes with almost anything you don't have to just be the eyes uh, I usually will do one for the ears as well where you kind of uh, in a way I kind of use it as a, um, a measurement so what, I, what you could do here with that would be kind of checking out the the height of the ear is is something that you can do kind of get a uh, size of what should be happening when those things do transition to uh, different movements right so if I make a uh, let's just make a new one we'll erase this old box and let's make a new box So, well, we don't need a one that fills. We need to be able to see the lines. It's too thick. So, two. So, ear, like so, right? And just make it a little bit closer. So, we got the top and the bottom of the ear, like that. So when we do the movement, all right. And what we'll do here is kind of just move it to see if it's still where it needs to be in the spacing, all right? So this spacing technically is a little bit short. So that just means on your head part when you do go in and you modify it by just looking at that ear to get it lined up right so if we stretch like so and we can kind of get the height of the ear that way as well kind of remeasure the tip of the ear right like so you'll start to get closer and closer to those where those transition need to be all right so if we know that that box is the size from here to the bottom and we do the transition that shouldn't really change 
on the ear because ears don't get larger and bigger when your head turns right the only thing that should be larger or bigger is going to be your your face angle and that means that cut out like just like right along here right eyes are going to stay the same size eyebrows they same size no same size the face is going to be the thing that you'll be altering and then the hair and the outline of the hair you might need to like uh, play around with the fading of the hair as well so when you come back and you do see okay this line is here um, when you make your second head for your um, your movement you can uh, start to either like I said color or uh, shave as needed so if we know that this part for that when the head turns if I add this here and I'm going in to shave that part here right so that part would technically be part of that and then you can color in whatever you want to color in when you do the uh, the blending part so we start to color it or blend in look at this color here So whenever you do do your coloring and blending in, even if it's subtle changes, and say this is part of that tattoo part, because technically you don't see that part. So whatever changes you make, no matter how subtle they are, you'll have the, you can just use the guide boxes or lines, and that'll kind of help you with what you're going to be doing next. So it's a little bit darker. And usually, hey, look at that there. Um, before the head turn, remember this is the part we don't, we can't see until he turns his head uh, towards the window. So, um, whenever you do do these outlines for the spikes, when you do the spikes as well, I think that's pretty good faded like I wanted it to be. Uh, yeah. So, um, your spikes here. Again, you can just cut these from the back of the head and either make these longer or shorter based on the, uh, based on that, that, like the head turn. So whenever you are uh, using your head turn here, right, and this looks weird as hell it's because we haven't put the, the hair where it needs to be. All right. So for instance, 
if you want to go back here again what you can do is cut and we start there but you can cut all the way down all right like so copy and I want it on top of this layer and just put paste so now we have the outline of what the head should be so if we look at that first bike which is this one here this would be let's cut off for the chair so even if I went here and this is where the head is and I just cut out everything here If you really need to really look at it, if I want to just check out what it's doing here in the transition, you can do that here. Because we know this piece goes here for all of these parts, right? And let's make sure none of this other stuff gets in the way. We could just cut this out. So we don't we only need to really the foreshadowing or the outlining of the the spikes or all of them right so let's go right about right there right oh it's because I shortened it <laughs> that's why so um yeah so this part here Whenever you do these, uh, when you're doing this, even if you're doing the skull, you can cut out all of that stuff that you don't need. So these subtle changes here. So whenever you do. Uh, have this piece break so and then when you have a change you can have this piece that goes over it and it'll give you the angle of the head as well so when we so these pieces here when we cut those out Right. So if we just went, let me fix this one thing that's bothering me. Whatever subtle changes you want to make, you do those as well.
All right, that was just bothering me. All right, so back to so basically we had this part of the hair. So these spikes. And we do the head movement. So there are the spikes. So spikes are there. When we do this part of the head that comes into play. And these would be a little bit angled differently. And, and how we really need to move the head, you will be able to do that as well. I'm probably going to put that in a part two. And we'll go over like some of the subtle changes. But that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching. And uh, thank you very much everyone on YouTube. I do appreciate you watching the video as well. Y'all have a great uh, night.